Hello, everyone, and welcome back for this week's studio visit. I'm Danielle Deigert from Art Center Sarasota, and I'm here with Miguel Saludes. Welcome, Miguel. Hi. How did you start as an artist? How did this all come about for you? Well, I guess I've always been an artist since I was little, just drawing all the time. Uh, but what really influenced my my you know getting serious in the in the career of being an artist was coming to the United States. Because in Cuba, forget about access to art materials. You know, it's like survival of fitness over there. So I was a kid in Cuba. I had no dreams of fulfilling my, my love for art because there was no access to any serious material. But when I came to the U.S. and, you know, I, I got, you know, to school here and the access to having so much, you know, so many art materials at my disposal, it encouraged me to, you know, to create. Um, so... And then my, my teachers, um, all my educators, my friends, uh, who are artists as well, um, they've all encouraged me. My parents, um, who incredibly enough, uh, encourage me to be an artist. <laughs> they usually don't hear that. <laughs> so Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. How old were you when, you when you moved here? 16. I had just turned 16. Yeah. So a young adult at that point. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> And did you move to Miami or Fort Myers where you're at now? I went to, I went to Miami. I call Miami my, my originally home because that's where I lived, you know, for a long time there. Uh, and then I moved to Gainesville to, you know, for grad school and then I found myself down in Fort Myers. So have you only lived in Florida since you've been in the U.S. then? Correct. Okay. Only Florida. I'm a Florida boy. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's great. It's a, it's a great place to live. Yeah. <laughs> <I like> <laughs> Um, so as we go, if you guys have questions out there, please put them in the comment section here. That's what we're all about, to answer any question you have, uh, maybe describe something a little further. Uh, so the next question I have for you, well, just a little bit more about art is your vocation. You studied and you have your master's, right? Master's? Yes. Okay. All right. And what else do you do other than being an artist? Are you full-time? Do you have an additional job? I mean, I... I could consider myself a full-time artist because I, I do this all the time, you know, all days, you know, every day a week, but I'm also a teacher and uh, that's a, you know, full-time profession and you have to give your, your heart <laughs> to that profession uh, and I'm very passionate about it. I don't think, uh, you know, I, I think being an artist encourages me to be a teacher because I love teaching my, you know, my knowledge of art and my passion. So I teach high school here in Fort Myers and uh, I love it so far. So I kind of like jiggle with those two, uh, um, professions there, teaching and, and being an artist. And I think they complement each other quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, because you're always discussing ideas that interest you and, and further others' interests as well, right, with the students. True. I'm sure they have styles that you might not love, but, you know, explaining them also creates that dialogue. Right, and, you know, it's, it's really nice, you know, um, to be able to teach something, you know, like all these students don't necessarily know. This is the first time they've seen all these artists that you take for granted already, you know, you've seen them so, you know, for, for so long, but these kids, they've never seen them and they, they're so amazed when they discover them. And it's that moment of discovery that, that is really great. And then when they themselves see that they can create, even though the kids that are not necessarily, don't necessarily consider themselves artists, the first time they do something that they feel proud about and they realize it, that's, that's really awesome. Great, good. I mean, it's a fantastic profession. It definitely takes a lot of heart to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about you and your work. We mentioned there's a piece behind you that's in progress. Um, yeah. But kind of, can you explain your work conceptually for us? Just a little bit behind the work. Well, um, at this moment, at this stage in my life, I'm mostly painting um, landscapes. And their landscapes you know, mostly influenced from real life. There's also a little bit of twist and imagination going on there. They don't necessarily have to be replicas of an original place. But what's important about these landscapes that I'm painting, they're, they're influenced by real sites that I've visited uh, and, they're, uh, and my experience of those places. And, um, you know, I, I come from, you know, I'm proudly a uh, Cuban artist who, who has a, you know, a legacy of, you know, Cuba has a legacy of a lot of landscape painters that have traditionally painted the Cuban uh, landscape. And it's kind of like a way of, of uh, stating their, their, 
love for their countryside, for their motherland. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of patriotism there, you know, their identity as, as Cubans. Um, unfortunately for me, I didn't get to live in Cuba for a long time. Let's just say long enough to really fall in love with landscape, it's because Cuba has amazing landscapes, and to fall in love with the work of Cuban landscape painters. But growing up in the United States, I kind of had to earn my, 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 my identity as an American as well. I had to learn a new language, I had to adapt to a new culture, embrace it. Um, and I think my, my, my landscapes are kind of like my way of showing my appreciation for this adoptive motherland that's given me everything. You know, freedom, uh, access to, to everything. And uh, I'm just proud to be where I am. So I'm taking my Cuban heritage, love for landscapes and adapting it to appreciate the American countryside. It's kind of like how I could break it down. There's a lot more in it. <laughs> <Simplified>. <laughs> you said, I mean, we, we were just talking and you said that seeing those landscapes in the museums in Cuba was what really inspired you to become an artist, right? As I, as I mentioned, my, my parents encouraged my career as an artist and my dad took me to museums as a young boy. And uh, I got to see a lot of work from, from really awesome artists, uh, particularly one by you know, Tomas Sanchez. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's an amazing landscape uh, painter. Uh, who paints like the landscape, it's like, a, like the landscape the way it looks like, but he creates his own landscapes. And uh, there's a lot of Zen Buddhism in it. So I think that's where I, where I caught that idea of, you know, painting landscapes that encourage meditation and peace and quiet and serenity. I think his work was kind of like one of the turning points in my life when I saw it, I wanted to do something like that. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> It's always great to have a turning point. So, well, and you were talking about falling in love with painting and um, and the language of paint too. So you're talking yes. about landscapes that are kind of meditative, but is the process also that for you? Um, the process, um, like, what do you mean? Like, while you're painting, is it a meditative well, process? Or while you're conceptualizing work, I mean, is that all yeah. a, a calm space for you, an excited space for you? How does how do you feel about that? It's very calm. In fact, the uh, people that know me very well, uh, my, my art colleagues from, from school, they know that I can't paint when I'm around people. <laughs> <laughs> I, cannot, uh, I'm, I cannot focus and I have to work in, qu in quiet and peace. Uh, and uh, it has to be a very quiet moment. And uh, I need to listen to certain kind of music to get in the zone. And sometimes it takes me like up to like maybe 30 minutes to get in the mindset to start just to start mixing colors and when you know there's a moment when i get going that when i'm once i'm there i can keep going but and when i lose the concentration it's old it's like i have to i, I can't work for long hours i i work in small bursts of, of time whenever i can concentrate but you mentioned something about the language of painting i don't know mm -hmm. if i answered that necessarily but using thick paints we kind of talked about that um not necessarily all over the place but i think paint has a language in itself that can get sculptural and and uh you can show your hands in the painting so when you get up close to the painting you can see the artist's expression and uh we talked about a little bit of the idea of Zen buddhism and you know how i'm interested in all that and it's almost like the calligraphy you know uh calligraphy, you know, Japanese uh, mm -hmm. calligraphy. So I don't speak Japanese, unfortunately. I can't write, but the idea of very loosely capturing your expression and leaving it on the canvas, that interests me. And you have some watercolors on display at the Art Center as well, right? So mm -hmm. it's not all just these thick paints. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, and um, I, I love watercolor. I think watercolor is actually how I got started with painting, how I learned to paint. But watercolor is a very different language. It's more about fluidity <laughs> and the water, you know, it's spreading. So it's like rivers and, you know, it's, it's awesome. And uh, I love that process. And oil is a little bit more uh, rigid in a way, but also fluid because, you know, you control it a lot more. Mm -hmm. And you can capture, you have a lot more control over what to do with that oil. So I still prefer oil. It's my favorite uh, medium. And it's the one that really captures the hand. But watercolor... You know, I take off my hat. It's an amazing medium. Uh, so those are my favorites. Those are the ones that, you know, I and kind of like. So I have, a, I have a question that's 
a little separate, but still revolved around your studio practice. How do you begin your work? Are you on location and sketching? Do you work in the studio solely? Do you work from photographs? How does that no. begin? I'm a very lousy drawer, uh, and I, I, I love looking at people's sketchbooks, but I don't have a sketchbook. That's not the way I usually work. Um, and I barely plan. Um, the way it starts is I'm driving around and I see something, I notice something that I like and maybe something that I drive around by a lot of times and I think about it and then in the back of my head, I imagine a painting. And there will come a point that I'll get to that location, take a look at it, record some videos, take pictures, and then take it back, look at those pictures while I'm working on other paintings. A few months might pass by, maybe a year or more, until wow. I'm ready to, to begin. And it cooks for inside of my head for that long. And sometimes it dies, the idea dies. Um, because I take so long making paintings, I, I think it helps process the idea of the, the painting, and conceptualizing it. Sometimes I get to like, you know, like I was telling you, I went to Utah uh, last semester, I mean, last year, semester, last year. And uh, I took all these amazing pictures. I, I love the place, I fell in love with it. But I haven't been able to paint it till now. So it's almost been a year since wow. then. So I've had a chance to really process all of that. And uh, even like, I recently got a, um, a virtual reality thing, like a Oculus Go, I think. Okay. And now I, I get to experience a location on virtual reality which is like 360 videos or photographs. And uh, it kind of like really brings back a lot of the experience. Cause you know, when you take a picture, it flattens it, you lose a lot of track, but I think virtual reality does wonders nowadays in the way that you can re-experience the place. And I did have a time where, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, are those photos of your own or are those photos produced by whatever location those are your own just you yeah I, I i like to work for my own photos yeah in my own, yeah but i like to go back to the place and see what other people have posted because you know it is a location so it's an it's nice to see what other people have posted and their own points of view and uh, i like to you know feed into all of that but I, I do like to work for my own photographs and sometimes like back in 2017 when i was living in gainesville i was doing a lot of plein air i had the time and it was awesome. Like I could just go out there and work for, you know, hours and uh, just looking directly at the landscape, which I think taught me a lot about color. But I can do a little bit more uh, compositions that are a little bit more ambitious while in my studio. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I mean, in your studio, that's, <laughs> that's when you spend the years on the pieces, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, so I just want to let everyone else who's just joining in, if you've got questions, leave them in the comment section. I'm here with Miguel Saludis. His website is his name, so it's miguelsaludis.com if you guys are interested in looking at his work. Um, so the next question I have for you is um, uh, the Public Works projects. I saw in your CV that you've got some of these under your belt. Um, yeah. Are they projects that you've started, that you've joined in on? Kind of talk about that pro that process. I'm not sure if there's many artists out there who've been a part of it, but maybe a yeah. little bit of feedback. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I believe, yeah, Alvaro was actually when, when we were working in, in uh, back in uh, undergrad, um, we worked in a project as part of a class with our teacher Gretchen Schumagel and uh, it was, um, it was actually pretty interesting because um, it was a, a group of students from FIU, Florida International University, went to the Amazon, uh, studied the Yagua Indians, uh, the Yagua tribe, which is kind of like a tribe and kind of like in danger, you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say extinction, but they're, they're being affected a lot. Um, and then they were studying the culture and they were, you know, they went there and they helped out. And then all these science students, they took all these photographs and documents and, um, and they brought them back. Uh, and then we worked with these students that would bring a mural in the school, which I think is hanging somewhere in the medical building or somewhere. And uh, we drew a lot of the stuff, you know, like the ayahuasca plants, which is, you know, they have, it has a religion, a religious undertone. And um, it's been a very long time. But it was learning about the culture and then making art about it. And that was pretty cool. And then the other project that I remember working on, um, it was while I was studying, studying in UF, and I think it's the Sydney Linear Center, which was uh, a school for exceptional students. 
and we had we were invited to come paint, uh, paint murals in the school and uh, we went there and you know we worked on that so that was pretty cool yeah that's amazing that's i mean i think working for the art center of course i see a lot of that community centered um artwork or feedback or discussions that the community itself has but i think murals are a huge um conversation starters you know beginning of social change or just kind of noticing like you know experiencing that um the tribe that was nearly extinct or going extinct you know these indigenous people and then being able to just describe that in some way for the yeah. public i think it's really yeah, i think it was really nice that the teacher uh our teacher um gave us that opportunity to work on it ourselves instead of you know she could have done the project herself or, or worked with you know like the other uh, other teachers in the school you know like but she allowed the students to work on the project and take credit for it and she also gretchen uh she had another project called eat lionfish which she did in a gallery in miami which was uh, uh all the students we like painted we did different depictions of, of the lionfish and the idea was to raise awareness of an invasive species and uh you know like the fact that it's, it does not belong. Well, the, yeah, the lionfish were a huge problem a couple of years ago, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, another project to raise awareness about an environmental situation. So she's she's awesome. <laughs> Do you consider yourself an environmentalist or an environmental painter? In a sense of, I mean, not in a political sense, no. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe uh, in a spiritual sense, I think nature is at the core of, of, of who we are and you know it's maybe even in a religious sense um finding god in nature finding spirituality in nature and you know without nature we lose ourselves i think you know you know i need to be around surrounded by by, by nature i def definitely you know i'm not politically active but i definitely condemn like you know the human intervention and you know nature and destruction of nature because again, that's uh, the, that's the core of who we are, and it's also like our livelihood. We destroy nature, we're lost. We have, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I so in that sense, visiting some of you said you meant you mentioned going to the west of the United States last year, mm -hmm. but that mm -hmm. was a new landscape for you. So yeah. is your work that's associated with that? Does it feel new and different, or do you have a lot of the crossover between landscapes you are very familiar with? Oh, I think it's very different. Um, I remember I, I told you this like I grew up in the tropics and I think that plays a lot of influence in how my paintings are very colorful and you know sunlight I've looked at my work and I've looked at work of people from you know like Europe and from the north you know and the color palette is very different my color palette is very sunny very bright mm -hmm. um, so I think that remains you know, Florida is a very bright uh, place and the west is a very bright place, so I can still you know, painted very similarly, but the colors are very different because in the tropics you have a lot of greens, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of greenery. But then in the west is very red; everything is red, and I think that to me was otherworldly. When I saw it for the first time, I felt I felt like I was in another planet, and I completely, you know, it all struck me like I wanted to paint it so bad. And it's very curious that a lot of the natural pigments from the land, like the sand, it's called, um, uh, the name of a sandstone, like I have it at the top of my lips, but I can't. Navajo, red sand, okay. I think it's what they call it. Navajo sandstone. It's a red oxide. And that's the same pigments used for burnt sienna, Venetian red, Indian red. <laughs> really? Yeah, so I picked up the, you know, looking at the color, looking at the sun, it's like, this is literally the color straight out of the tube, you know, like all this oxides, you know, it's like uh, uh, iron, it's iron. Um, so when I make these paintings, I'm literally using the pigment <laughs> when I'm actually painting the sun. So I love the fact that I'm using the same natural pigments that are part of, you know, not necessarily extracted from there, but chemically it's the same or similar. similar to, yeah part of that landscape mm -hmm. it's the, mm -hmm. so the piece behind you is from one of those photographs from out west that is yeah that's correct they took <laughs> that was uh zion national park that's, that's where i got it from and zion kind of has both landscapes though doesn't it it's got some 
woodsy area almost too. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. It's it's a very unique one because uh, since Zion, you're like at the bottom of the canyon uh, looking up versus Grand Canyon, you're at the top of the canyon looking down. Mm -hmm. But there's a river that's flowing down there and it, it, there's humidity all around. So it allows for a lot of trees to grow. So when you're around the river, there's, it's a wood scene and you see a lot of green there, but there's also this reds and cliffs and desert area. So it's, like you said, it has a contrast, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. And then you mentioned this piece is in progress. How, how far along is it? How many hours do you think you spend on this piece? You mentioned you're working in oil, so we always assume that takes years. Um, but kind of, you know, walk us through where this piece is at and how much longer you've got, maybe. So I've been working on this painting since maybe February. Um, and it's only maybe like halfway done. Uh, it, it, I mean, I've, I've advanced a lot in it, but it, I will really slow down when I start doing details. So all the cactus, they have the main valleys and stuff, but they're missing all the uh, spikes, the little mm -hmm. thorns. That's going to be really painful to paint. But, uh, you know. <laughs> and you have a piece that is a cactus piece at the art center that's got a rattlesnake right. in it. And that right. is very thick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely got the texture of those, those thorns on the cactus really shine through. Right. Mm -hmm. That one took me a lot less because it was a little bit more loose and just about capturing the colors. Um, this one, since it's, you know, it's one of the larger paintings I've made, it's a lot thinner. Um, it still has a expression, but it, you know, it's going to have a lot more detail. In it. So, well, I, I mean, it's great. The composition is great from here. So. Thank you. <laughs> it, I, I, I give myself these challenges that sometimes I hate myself. <laughs> I think we all do that though. It's the, yeah. the power of the artist to present ourselves with problems that we want to solve, but really don't want to solve, but need to solve that yeah. roundabout way. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I have a um, kind of a, a marketing business question for you too. I noticed that you're starting to branch out of Florida in terms of exhibitions. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where a lot of artists that I speak to are kind of at, you know, they're at the stage where they want to branch out. Um, maybe you can give us some of your, best of stories or tips or was it just, you know, ra ratio of failures versus success, those kinds of, mm. uh, we don't know what to expect mm. on an individual basis, but tell us about your story with that. It, it's, uh, I think every artist can relate to this. And you only get to see the success. You don't get to see the failures. And it's a world of failure. Like it's constant, constant rejection after rejection after rejection. Nobody gets to see that. You all, all, everybody gets to see the tip of the iceberg, but nobody gets to see what builds up the iceberg. Mm -hmm. But um, there's, there's a few websites that have a lot of call for entries. One of them is called Cafe Call for Entry. Mm -hmm. Call for Entry. And then they have a lot of open calls for exhibitions throughout the United States. So Alvaro is actually the one that's challenged me and helped you know, with the idea of applying, you know, apply, 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 apply. Um, at the beginning, it was kind of like hard because you always fear the idea of rejection. Mm -hmm. And you're also spending money. All these calls, you got to pay a little bit here and a little bit there. So it takes a, a toll yeah. on your pocket. But you have to be ready to invest, you know, <laughs> in success. So I've been applying to those calls for entries in the past couple of years, very actively, very actively. And sometimes I will get maybe like I'll apply to like 10, 15 and maybe get one out okay. of those or, or no, or we'll get nothing. You know, like it's, the ratio is very small, but you have to apply. There's this teacher from UF, Richard Hyde, um, who he's, his practice is he does a lot of public work and a lot of, you know, he submits a lot of proposals. And, he, he said something that's very true. Like, if you want to get some success, you have to apply to a lot of things because you only be accepted to a very small percentage of that. So you have to apply, 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 and don't, be dis don't get discouraged by the rejection. Understand that art is very subjective. And what appeals to someone might not appeal to the next person. That doesn't mean that you suck. Right. Okay? Um, and then just pursuing that I've been more ambitious about that and uh, the other thing is just writing proposals 
That's how I got to the arts center, Sarasota, for which I'm very thankful. By the way, I have to say you had, I reviewed your proposal <laughs> for marketing materials and it was fantastic. I think you had about 30 pages of examples <laughs> and written text. Uh, it was, it was a lot thank to, you. Uh, to enjoy. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that was, you know, it took a while to, to get that done, but, um, you know, having the right conceptualizing your work, writing it down in a concrete way so that people can read you and understand you. Uh, sell the idea of the show. What is it that your work is about? Why, why does the community benefit from it? Uh, why is it unique? Why should that gallery or space have you instead of somebody else? Have good documentation of your work, good pictures, that's really important. Have a working website uh, that people can see your work in, you know. Um, it's all these things. And it's taken years to get there. Like, and it's not, I'm not even, I don't even consider the idea 100% working. You know? It's still a work in progress. It takes a very long time to get there, but you gotta continue, you know, working on it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you're doing the paintings, but you also have to work with the marketing side. Right. That's why I say like, sometimes I'm not painting for, for sometimes a whole month because I've been researching things and writing and taking pictures. That takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know you mentioned it took time to put that proposal together, but what I really loved what you said is looking at the institution, the gallery or the museum or the call and what they're actually looking for, you know, what types of work do they want to represent? Are they uh, portrait focused? Are they working towards social change? You know, all of these things. It's really important. And I think that's how you start to narrow down, mm -hmm. you know, your potential and where you, you fit and then from there, you find the others that are kind of in that niche too. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so it looks like we don't have questions from you guys. If you've got anything, please uh, ask it real quick. Um, and then I have I've got a question about your future, you know, the future of your work. I, this piece, you've still got three to six months on, but um, right. <laughs> is it constantly evolving? How often do you think it changes? Do you think it will, um, you know, is it, we mentioned kind of finding influences and organically and do those change your work kind of, are you excited about it? Those are the questions I've got. I think change is very important. Um, I definitely don't want to be stuck doing a certain style or a certain series for a long time because I think that you stop growing when that happens. Um, and I think for me, it helps me that since I'm constantly looking for inspiration in all this Places, um, the, the source imagery is not going to be the same all the time. And uh, like, for example, going to the desert and finding a completely different color palette and different, completely, completely different landscape. Mm -hmm. I want to continue traveling. I think traveling is, uh, is a very important way of, of growing as an artist um, whenever possible. So whenever I get the chance, I try to go to um, museums and see arts. Uh, and feed my eyes and try to learn from these artists. But sometimes I also like to go in national parks and, and feed myself with new inspiration, which I think completely, you know, keeps uh, pushing my work. But if you see the trajectory of my work from the past 10 years, you'll see that every couple of years there's a big change, something else emerges, my style moves, maybe subject matter changes, style changes. So I'm constantly changing, and I think that's I think that's good. Some galleries might not like that. Uh, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I, I like to continue. You know, like I'm very recently I started um, something new that's happened to the work is I started to take more control over the compositions. So instead of just copying exactly what's on the image, I'm starting to completely you know question that and create my own composition so that it's even better. Uh, even in, in, in the sense of telling a story by creating a narrative. So I'm very open during the creating process to change things. Mm -hmm. Do you consider your works illustrative? You have that piece called Carrie's World, right? Yeah. That's got, it's, it's a portrait and landscape. Um, right. I mean, I feel like that one is a good example of kind of telling a story of a place, a person, a time period. Yeah, um, I, um, illustrative, I don't know. Um, depends on how you see it. Um, 
Depends on the story. Um, depends on what they're trying to tell. Um, I would say yes and no. <laughs> um, I wouldn't know. Their landscapes are still lives. A lot of them are both. Uh, like that one, you, you could see it as a landscape. You could see it as a still life. Um, it's not really necessarily telling a story, but but it's talking about a, an experience of a, of a place. Others, like the one with the, the car painting, with you know, like inside the car, that's a little bit more narrative, because it talks about journey and you know traveling and experiencing you know the night and being introspective and thinking while you're driving around, you, know, you get lost in thought sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's a little yeah, bit Yeah, so they're both kind of reflectionary and documentary at the same time, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, well, everyone, I put Miguel's uh, website address in the comment section here, so please feel free to look at his work. Um, I saw he's also posted the video that we did for him on his website, so take a look at that since you can't get into the galleries. Um, I just want to say thank you all for attending. Thank you so much, Miguel, for being here. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. And um, thank you. good luck finishing that piece. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Can't wait to share. But thank you again for the opportunity, Danielle. I really appreciate it. It was a really nice chat. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes. And um, since Miguel's work is up in the gallery, we've extended our exhibitions in hopes to reopen. We do not have an official reopening date yet, uh, but we will keep you all posted on that, and hopefully you can see his work in person. Great. All right. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.